Hi, welcome to my latest video. Well, in this one, I'm going to let you take a look at yet another toy I bought. This I bought myself, and it's really meant to be a partner to the microscope that I recently showed on the channel. The one that allowed you to take a very small item, like a circuit board, and expand it up to something that would be easy to view and work on. For example, if I'm trying to replace a particular component that's a surface mount, I'd be able to do it much easier with that. Also repairing pins, let's say, on a motherboard socket, I could do that as well. Anyway, this is a three function soldering station. Now when I say three function, it has three different main components to it all built into one. Now to submit some criticism, and I can understand it to a degree, about buying a combined unit like this. Quite honestly, one of the three I really don't need because I have something that'll work you know, just as good, but it's nice to have it handy if while I'm using this, I need the function that that provides. And that happens to be a zero to 15 volt DC power supply. So it has that built into it as one of the three components. But the ones that I really want are, it's got a really high end soldering station with a lot of control on it. And more importantly, the third component is a hot air SMD type unit that allows me to surface heat using hot air surface mount components and either replace them or install them or combinations of the both. So I'm going to open this up, show you what's inside, and then we'll take a look and see how it works. Okay, let's open this box up. It doesn't have a nice decorative box to it, which is, you know, probably a good thing. It reduced the price a little bit. Right off the top, we got an operations manual, which I'll be spending some time with to make sure I fully understand it. Looks like this is more or less security and safety warnings. I mean, it is somewhat dangerous with the hot air and the soldering iron, so this is probably a good thing. Looks like this is probably warranty cards. Yeah, that's what that'll be. So, all kinds of goodies. It comes with solder, mostly tin, a little bit of copper in it, so it's lead free. That's good. Looks like a soldering pad to wipe your soldering iron on. Soldering tips, a whole collection of them. Not sure if they're chrome plated or just uh, white brass. Oh, the hot air nozzles. Looks like it's got uh, three in this package and one in this package. Different size tips that you can choose from. Very small to a square one. I guess that would be for a surface mount. Uh, chip of some sort that matches that. Oh, for the soldering iron, a place to clean the tips and for holding the actual soldering iron in place. Let me open that up. It's got a little cover on it here. Curled up brass, help clear the tip, holds into here. It looks like the extra tips would go over here as well. That's great. The soldering one that I have right now doesn't have that capability. Oh, it looks like the soldering iron itself. Take that out. It already has a tip on it, one of the smaller ones, but not the super small one. I'll just put that right into the station. I'll save this as a cover in case I want to cover it up. Oh, these are the probes. These are the power probes for connecting, or it might have a meter as part of the power supply too. We'll find out when I get into it a little bit more. I just talked about it as being a variable power supply up to 15 volts DC, but we'll see what that comes out to once I open it up. Oh, one of these mechanical air solder suckers. Desoldering uh, pump is what they re officially call it. Give you one of those in there. Oh, a pair of tweezers. Probably static free and, uh, you know, very fine point to them. Yep. So I got that. This looks like the thing to hold a hot air nozzle. And it looks like it screws on to the side. So there's probably screws in here I'll have to attach to hold that there. Oh, here's the nozzle. The hot air nozzle. Sort of reminds me of my welding iron, my welder tip, that is. So through this tube, we're going to have a combination of uh, air and power blowing. Unless it blows the, the air generated in here, that may be the case. I'm not exactly sure. It looks like it might have a motor in there, and this may just provide the power and the controlling of that motor. But we'll see when I get it all together. And then I think that's all the stuff and the actual device itself. Well, it's got the three sections to it. It's got three separate power. It looks like you have, well, I don't think there's a separate power for the output 
of this. I guess when you just turn this on, it turns the power on to here, and it's got separate power switches for the SMD, that's the hot air, and for the soldering iron. So you got temperatures here. It looks like for the air, it's got the air volume that'll come out from one to eight. It's got the connectors for the soldering station and for the SMD. And then these would be the output display probe. It also has, it looks like it has the capability of testing power as well by moving the positive over to this one, zero to 15 volts. Okay. It's got a nice little handle on top. It's got a fan in the back and an overall power connector here right above the power input. It probably weighs uh, maybe about four and a half pounds. So let me try to set it all up and then we'll try to test it out. Okay, here it is all hooked up now. I'm gonna power it on with the switch in the back first. Make sure all three of these switches are off. There's a separate switch, power switch for each section. I'll we'll turn the back one on first. Notice we got a power light on here. However, you see the dashes in all the windows? None of the sections are turned on. So what I'll do is I'll start off by showing you how to turn it into, it's a voltmeter or a power generator. So if you hit this, you can switch between them. But let me turn it on first so you see what I mean. Right now, I have it connected the probe to the power output connector. It uses a common ground here. If I turn this on and then I start increasing the voltage, that is the, that's the voltage that's actually displayed coming out of it. It goes up to 15.2 and it can go down to all the way zero. This will then show the amperage that's coming out of it in milliamps. So it says one milliamp to three amps here, whereas that says zero to 15 volts right here in the little legend here. It also has a connector for charging anything with the five volt USB. That's only for charging. So we'll, uh, we'll start by trying to test the voltage output. Now it just so happens I have here a small piece of a 12 volt RGB right? The standard traditional RGB. It's about, I don't know, 10 inches maybe that I have here. So what I'm going to do is I've connected up to the black wire, which is a 12 volt supply, a little alligator clip. That makes it easy for me to connect it up here and then to test it out. So you put the positive to that. So I'll connect this over here. I left the tip on just to keep it insulated for a while. Let me put it up to 12 volts. There we go, 12 volts. And now I'll take the negative one and I'll connect it up to some of these colors. So if I connect it up to the, let me get this so it doesn't short. I can get it connected up to the top one, that's blue. Notice the amperage. It's 0 0.90 amps or about 94 milliamps. I could connect it to the next one. That's the red, about the same amount. And then finally, the last one there, green. That was a little bit less of a draw in terms of current. Now, what happens if I hold this? I'll start with the easiest one to connect to. What if I hold this here? And you see the, you see the, uh, the blue, right? Now I'll lower the voltage. Notice that the amplitude is going down. It cuts off where? Just about four volts. It cuts off completely, it looks like. Oh, a little bit lower, actually. Two and a half, three volts. It cuts off and I can go back up again. That's how the computer actually communicates with it in terms of changing the amplitude. Sometimes the bulbs go out and other times they just get dim. And the same thing will work no matter which voltage I have. Actually, what I'll do now is I'll try to use it as a voltmeter. So let me switch it to voltmeter. I'll switch this one over to the other side and I'll hit this little button to switch to the meter part. There's no voltage coming in. So now the probes are set to check for a voltage. Okay. I have this 9 volt battery still in the package. What I'll do is I'll just go ahead and put the probes down in it. I'll put the positive to the positive and the negative to the negative and let's see what we get. 9.8 volts. What happens if I switch them around to the opposite? Oh, it doesn't go negative. It only goes positive. That's interesting. I didn't see that in the manual. So that's interesting to learn. And then we'll try the soldering iron. So I have the solder they gave me. I'll go ahead and try melting some of that. Turn the soldering iron on, but make sure you take the plastic cover off. It comes with a tip already installed. 
this bottom one right here. So now it's coming up, it's gaining temperature. If you want to adjust it to voltage, you use these two buttons. This one goes up, it beeps, it goes up about two degrees at a time. So I'll bring it up. That's in Fahrenheit, but you can change it to centigrade. About 488. Let's see if it melts solder now. Yep, there it goes. It's melting the solder. I don't want it to drip, so I'll take it and dip it right into the tip cleaner here. And we can turn that off. We can either lower the temperature down quite a bit, but for now we'll just turn it off and put it back in here to cool off. Okay, let's try the hot air now. I'll turn this on. You gotta pull it out of the saddle in order for it to start. You can change the temperature with these two arrows here. And you can change the air with this knob. Definitely is hot, can't get too close to that. I can feel the hot air on there. Okay, let me turn it off. It's gonna keep running until it cools down. And once it's gone completely cool, it should shut itself off. There you go. So everything works. I checked the meter, it does positive only. We checked the voltage output, we checked everything. So hopefully this, you find this as useful as I plan to use it for, and uh, you can do some advanced soldering or some surface mount device soldering. Till the next time.